Hello world, my name is Cami, and welcome back to learning more about Xcode. Now today, we're going to be building our own user login and sign up pages using Firebase. So let's get right into it. Now this video is going to be chunked into three main parts. Um, this is just depending on how much of the project you already have done. And so we're going to start off by creating our Xcode project and designing the user interface. However, if you've already had that done, go ahead and skip to part two, where we're going to be setting up Firebase and our project and implementing it into our application. And then the final section is adding all of the code necessary to get our app to a functional minimum viable product. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into part one, which is setting up the Xcode project and user interface. Now, if you're brand new to Xcode, absolutely no worries. This is gonna be moving a little bit fast, but make sure you just have Xcode installed on your computer and you're good to go. So we're gonna start by creating a new Xcode project. We're going to make sure we select iOS app, click next. We can name this anything we want. So in this case, I might just say login example. Now don't worry about the team, the organization identifier, the bundle identifier. Just make sure that the interface is storyboard and the language is Swift and click next and go ahead and click create on your computer. Now that our project is loaded, we're going to go ahead and jump over to our navigation pane on the far left, click on main.storyboard or the main file, and this is going to load our view controller. If you're new to Xcode, this is essentially just like a mock-up of what our iPhone screen could look like, and we're going to be able to drag and drop different objects from what we call the object library onto the screen. So let's pause and think about what we're going to need to set up this user interface. Now I'm going to sort of neglect design for a little bit in this example just to make it a little bit faster. You can customize it as you like. But if we think about it, usually we'll have our initial loading screen for an application. It'll have a button to log in if you already have an account, or it'll have a second button to sign up. So let's go ahead and go to the object library and add those two buttons. Now the object library can be found by going in this middle frame um, up to this top little plus sign at the top. This is the object library. And you can go ahead and see a bunch of different options here, but button is actually the second option. So we can just drag it and drop it anywhere onto our screen. Now in this case, um, our attributes pane on the very far right, it can be toggled or untoggled using this little button on the very top right corner. Um, allows us to edit it and so let's just call this our login button and then we're also going to just command c and command v to copy and paste this our button so then we can have a create an account button as well and technically this is all we need on this very first page and so for the sake of time we're going to go ahead and move on to our two additional pages that we're going to need so obviously we're going to need another view controller to log in have that screen and a separate view controller to create an account. So an easy way that we can do this honestly is just clicking on the top of this view controller and copying it and pasting it and it should paste right on top but if we can move it so then we can get a little bit of a separation. That's just the easiest way in my opinion but we can also go to the object library and search view controller and drag and drop it and have the exact same effect. So whatever your preference is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move these just a little bit and then I want to keep one of the buttons for each of these pages um, just because it's going to be our actual button we're going to use in order you know to actually click login after we input some information and one to create the account on the second page. So I'm just going to copy and paste that one over here as well. Alrighty. Now, something I want to do for the sake of navigating between these panes is I'm going to click on this initial view controller and I'm actually going to go to the very top of our screen where it says editor and I'm going to click embed in and select navigation controller. Now this is going to create another little view controller and it might look a little bit weird or fancy, but essentially this is going to allow us to navigate between these pages when we create segues or movements between them. So now I'm going to select login and this button is pretty much supposed to take us to this page and we can do that by holding control and dragging to the next page and then we can choose a bunch of different options. The simplest one would be show. And once we do that, we see that we actually get this cool little back button right here, um, which will help us navigate. Say you forgot to create an account, you don't want to have to restart the app to get back to that page. So once that's done, we're going to also click on create an account and hold control and drag to that screen as well. 
which also creates our back button. And just like that, we can actually grab the UI necessary for each individual page. So let's go ahead and start with our login view controller. And what we're going to need to add is whatever method we are using to log in. So in this tutorial, we're going to be using an email and password to log in. However, you can customize this as you want. Say you want people to input a username and a password or a couple of things extra. It can all be customized to your liking. However, in this case, we're going to need two fields of inputs. And so in Xcode, they're called text fields. So we're going to go up to our little object library and I'm going to start typing in text field. And this is just a spot where the user can input some information, um, which is going to be super helpful. So once you have this selected, this first text field, we can actually add a placeholder text in the attributes panel. And I'm going to just say enter email and I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm going to change this one to enter password. And I'm actually going to just copy and paste these exact same things onto our create an account view controller, as we're only going to need an email and password to create an account as well. Now, something that might be a fun challenge is adding an additional password text field to confirm your password and make sure it's the same. You could do a confirmation of the email, through sending an email, um, but however you would prefer to style this is completely up to you. Except technically we have all of the main components that we need for the view controllers down right at the moment. And so I'm actually just going to do a little bit of magic and add a little bit of color to our view controllers here. And so I'll be right back when that's all finished. Alrighty y'all, and we are back. Now, this is the exact same, pretty much everything we had before, but personally, I just wanted to add a little bit of color to make it a little bit more exciting. And so, absolutely no worries if it looks a little bit different now, but every key component is still there. So we're almost done building the user interface for our app in Xcode. And the last part that we have to do is create the code files that are alongside the login page and the create an account page. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and add our actions and outlets to connect everything to the code. So then when we set up Firebase, we don't have to flip back and forth between multiple different files in Xcode. So let's go ahead and start by creating the login view controller Swift file. Now you might see that Swift um, or Xcode projects automatically load with one view controller class, which if you're on the attributes panel on the far right, if you click on the identity inspector, it looks like a little ID, you can see it has a class and it has a module. And this is because over in our navigation panel, we already have a view controller file and it has a little bit of default code already written for us. So we want to create this for the login page as well as the create an account page. So the way we're going to do that is going to the very top, we're going to go ahead and select File, New, File. We're going to specifically want a Cocoa Touch class. It's going to give us a little bit of extra code. And so in this case, make sure this subclass is UI View Controller. If it's not, no worries. Just go ahead and select UI View Controller from the tab. And then we're going to call it Login View Controller. The language should be Swift. And with that, we can click Next and we can click Create. And just like that, there's one code file. So if we go into our main.storyboard and find our login view controller, then we can go ahead and select this top bar above our view controller and then go to the identity inspector on the far right. It should be this little ID. You might be on the attributes pane on the right of this little ID, but make sure to select the ID. And then we're going to start typing in the class our login view controller and it should autofill. If it doesn't, it might just take a little bit. Make sure to save your project. You might have to restart Xcode, but it should load eventually. And so with that, we have that code connected. We're going to go ahead and open up the code side by side with the login page. I'm going to make just a little bit more room so then it's a little bit less hectic. Um, but we can open up our little helper with showing the code side by side with the view controller by in this middle panel going to what looks like little paragraphs almost it's the adjust editor options and we're going to select an assistant and so this should automatically load our code next to our view controller itself as you can see it gets a little crazy so i'm going to go ahead and collapse or toggle our attributes panel um, and we're only going to have this up for a short time but what i'm going to do here is connect um, these outlets here that inputs of information as well as our action item on the page which is the actual let's go let's log in button 
So the way I'm going to first connect the outlets is by holding control and dragging from our email text field into the code file right above this view did load file. Make sure you're within the class declaration and above view did load. It can be below view did load, but I've seen it's kind of just like typical practice to put it in that spot. And I'm going to call it email text field and make sure it is an outlet and a UI text field. And we're going to click connect. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with the password. We're going to hold control and drag right underneath the email text field, right underneath, make sure not within. And then we're going to call it password text field as well. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of space. And we can actually see if we hover over these little dots that they are connected, which is awesome. And then lastly, we're going to add our action, which is the let's go button. I'm going to hold control and drag underneath this view to load function. I'm going to let go and you should see the connection is an action and let's call it login clicked we're going to make the type ui button and we're going to go ahead and click connect and just like that we have all of the pieces on our view controller screen anything that the user can mess with can input information into or click on is now loaded into our code file as well so i'm going to click out of the code file we're going to repeat the exact same step with the create an account so once again we're going to go to file new file coco touch class we're going to call this create account or anything of the sorts just make sure you keep it consistent um, as a ui view controller in the language of swift we're going to create it now this is the part i always forget we're going to click on create an account open back up our attributes panel go to the identity inspector and we're going to type create account to connect it before we try to open it we're going to close our attributes panel open up the assistant and it opens up as it should and once again i'm going to hold control drag and connect these outlets finally we're going to connect our sign up button i'm going to just call it sign up clicked Make sure it's an action of type UI button, click connect, and just like that, we are all set with the user interface in this part of Xcode, which is pretty fantastic. And so now we're going to move into part two, which is creating our Firebase account, creating our project, and connecting it to this application that we started to build. So let's get into it. Our first step is we're going to navigate to firebase.google.com. Now this is going to manage our authentication and personally I just think it's a really cool way to get started if you've never worked with databases before, if you've never honestly built like a back-end kind of application before. Personally I started learning on Firebase when I was first learning how to use login and sign up pages. I still prefer it a lot of times because I think the documentation is fantastic um, and also you can honestly control all of it through just having an email account which I think is super cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to click get started and we're going to add a new project. It might ask you to create an account on your first time, um, so go ahead and do that first. But once you're to this page, we're going to click add project and you can name it anything. And so I'm going to just name it the same thing, login example. However, if you're working on a different app, then I recommend calling it the app that you hope to create. Um, then we're going to click continue. Um, you can enable Google Analytics if you want. I really recommend this um, if you're going to be creating a bigger project. I'm going to disable it just for now, just because this is simply an example project. Um, but once you're finished and decide, click Create Project, and we'll wait for the magic to happen. Wonderful. Once your new project is ready, we're going to click Continue. And then it's actually going to open up to this initial screen, which allows you to start by adding your app. So you can connect an Android, a web application, but we're working with iOS and so we're going to click that and it's going to ask us for a little bit of information. The first thing it's going to ask for is our Apple Bundle ID. It's okay if you don't know this off the top of your head. This is something that's created that identifies your project when you create it in Xcode. So we can actually navigate back to our Xcode project and find this by on our navigation panel on the far left. We're going to click above the folder on the title of our application and once you're under general you'll see the bundle identifier right here on this line you can go ahead and command c or copy it and then paste it right into firebase and everything else is optional so that's the only thing you're going to need from the app 
and we're going to click register. Next up, we're going to download a configuration file. And so we're going to click on the download button. Firebase has made it super easy. And all we're going to have to do is drag and drop this download into our Xcode project. So if I go down to my downloads, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it into my Xcode project and just click finish when it's done. Now you'll see mine has a little bit of a different name just because I've done this a couple of times for practice. Um, even I messed this up several times, so no worries, you're doing great. Um, but once you have that, we'll go back to Firebase and click next. And this is a really cool part that I think Apple has recently made changes to because usually I would use CocoaPods to connect to Firebase. However, now we can use the Swift Package Manager that's already in Xcode. So we're going to go ahead and first click copy and copy this github.com slash firebase slash firebase dash iOS dash SDK. Um, go ahead and copy that or keep it on mine. And then we're going to go back into our Xcode project once again. We're going to go up click on file, click on add packages, and we're going to see this really cool loading page that has a ton of different things that could be really cool to check out, just additional aspects that we can implement in Xcode projects. But we're going to go ahead and paste the URL in this top little search bar um, for GitHub. And as you can see, it loads right here, so we can go ahead and select it and click on add package. Now we're gonna wait for this to load. Don't worry, it might take a little bit of time and so I'll see you when we're back. And we're back. Alrighty, now that that's loaded, we're actually going to be able to select what aspects of Firebase we would like to include in our project. So today we're only going to be working with Firebase authentication, which we can see with Firebase auth, um, just a little bit down in this list of options. However, I really encourage you if you're building on a larger project to look more into Firebase, see what other aspects that you might be interested in. And I think that um, when it comes to this type of panel, you can always go back and add. Um, if you haven't added something and you can always go back and remove it. Um, so I just encourage you all to continue to check out Firebase, but all that's required today is Firebase auth. And so we can go ahead and click on add package. And just like that, Firebase is all loaded in our app. So if we go back, see what the next step is, we can go ahead and click next on Firebase. And we're going to actually be using Swift instead of Swift UI today. Um, we're going to want to add two lines of code to the app delegate page in our app. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy or copy this to clipboard, um, head back into our Firebase application. On the navigation panel, we're going to go to our app delegate and under where we import UI kit, we're also going to just paste or import Firebase core into our project. And we're also going to want to add one more line of code into this first function in our app delegate. It's the did finish launching with options, and we're going to want to configure our project. Now this is that second line of code here, which we can go ahead and copy right over into that uh, function. So I'm going to paste it, and this just configures our app to include Firebase. Um, and so once we have that, if we go back to Firebase one last time, we can, um, we're all set in our initial configuration, and we can go ahead and continue to console. Now, we're going to do one last thing in Firebase, and then we're on to step three, which is putting it all together. Now, we're going to be wanting to use the authentication in Firebase, so we're going to select it, or we can also see it on this little navigation bar on the left, it's the first one, and we're going to get started with authentication. We're going to want to enable the specific authentication type that we would like to use. And today we're going to be doing email and password, but they have a ton of really cool options that I also definitely encourage checking out. We're going to go ahead and click on email and password and click on enable and save. Now that we have that set up, we actually can go up um, past the sign in method to the users and see that we don't currently have any, which is to be expected. However, we're going to keep this page open because we're going to be able to watch users be created live, which is super cool. Something I really enjoy about Firebase. So we're going to go back over into our project and now we're going to move into part three, which is putting it all together and creating the code for our application. We're going to go ahead and start off by doing our create an account because it makes sense to want to be able to create an account before we try to log in. So we're going to go to the create account view controller page and we've already had all of our actions and outlets set up. So we're going to be exclusively working within the sign up clicked function uh, near the bottom. So first we're going to do some checking and now we're going to add two lines of code that kind of just ensure that 
users can't click on create an account without filling in any information. Say they leave the password thing blank, you don't want them to be able to create an account with only an email. So we're going to write two guard let statements to truly guard against it. I'm going to do guard let email equal email text field dot text else we're just going to return. This means we're just going to quit the function, it's not going to do anything. Now we're also going to write that for password by doing password text field dot text else return as well. Now this is kind of just like a safety net um, for if the users don't do something, if the users do something that we don't want them to do as developers. Um, I've noticed it's super, super helpful in the long run, especially when your app starts crashing and you're like, why in the world is it doing that? And then you find out that you just forgot to click on something that you wanted you to click on. It's a constant struggle, but tangent over. Finally, we're going to go ahead and implement Firebase in this specific code file. I'm going to do that by going up to line 8 under import UI kit, we're also going to make sure we import Firebase in this file so then we can utilize its vast array of functionalities. So now back within our sign up clicked um, function, make sure you're within the curly bracket, we're going to start typing out the one and only function we need, which is auth.auth with um, our little parentheses, dot create user and you can see it starts to autocomplete here. And we're going to want to create user with email, password, and completion. Now I'll show you why. We're going to go ahead and click enter on this option. And then we're going to go ahead and fill in the placeholders. I also love that about Xcode is that you can just click on it um, and fill in the placeholders. However, you can also just type it all out if you want, whatever you prefer. So we're going to use with email and we are going to use this email variable that we created right here. Same with password, we're going to call it password, and it's going to give us a completion option. And now when we click on this placeholder, we're going to want to click return or enter to create what we call a closure. Now this is essentially, hey, we're going to run this function, but then we're going to check is this function successful or has it failed? Now this is really important because what if someone has an account already and they try to make a second account, then they won't be able to do it successfully and the function is going to throw an error. And so we want to be able to account for this so that our app doesn't crash. Instead, we can use the error information and convey it to the user. Hey, you already have an account. Why don't you try logging in? And so we can do that by once we click enter, we're going to just call result um, Firebase result. We're not going to use this variable. And we're going to call the error an error. And we're going to do error in, and we're going to add an if statement. If let e equal error if an error exists. Let's open some curly brackets. Make sure we close it here. Then let's just go ahead and print. Let's go ahead and just print error. So this is not going to show anything on the screen. It's just going to load it in the console just for us. You can customize this. You can add in a little alert that would notify the user. But go ahead and just print error. And then we're going to add an else statement where here we want to go to our home screen. Now, we might have realized we didn't actually create a home screen, and so we're going to go ahead and do that real quick just now. So we're going to go back into our main.storyboard, and let's go ahead and just go up to the object library, add one more view controller. We don't need to add anything to this. This is just to show that it worked. And now we're going to click on create an account on this little yellow dot on the top. We're going to hold control and drag to here. We're going to have it show and then we're going to go ahead and click on the segue itself and open up the attributes panel and we want to give this transition a name so we're going to go into the attributes and so let's just call it like go to next or anything of the sort and we're going to copy this now the reason why we did not create it from the button we created it from the whole view controller is that we want to determine when this happens if we connect it from the bot button to this next screen it'll go to the screen no matter if it's successful or not with creating an account if we give it a title or an identifier which is go to next then we can actually determine in the code when we want this transition to occur so now that we have this why don't we actually just connect our login page by doing the same thing control drag show and then we're going to give it the exact same identifier go to next just so then we already have that out of the way once that's done, let's go back to our create an account view controller. 
And where we go to our home screen, we're going to go ahead and write self dot perform segue with identifier, that identifier that we gave it, and the sender is going to be self. Now that just means, hey, we are on this view controller, who's doing the action, this view controller is doing the action, and we're going to this next one that is identified by go to next. And so surprisingly, just like this, all of the code for creating an account is already completed. And just a couple lines of code, one major Firebase function, we already can create an account. And so why don't we just copy all of this over, copy and drag it directly to our login view controller as well. Because if we paste it into the login clicked function that we have, this is gonna stay the same as long as we need the text fields the same. Except the only thing that's going to actually change is this Firebase function. Although first we have to import Firebase at the top as well. But instead of creating user, we're going to want to do sign in with email password completion, but we can just do sign in because we already have all of this information present. And we can actually keep the errors the exact same and then performing the segue does the exact same thing. And so just like this, all of the code should be accurate. Just make sure you click sign in and set up create user and then the rest follows identically, which I personally think is pretty cool. So now if we go to our main view controller, we can actually test this out. So first, it's important to note, I have this view controller storyboard set on iPhone 11. So when I run this, I'm going to want to change it from iPod to match, which is an iPhone 11, just to keep the screens looking the same. And I'm going to go ahead and run this and we'll be back when the simulator loads. And we're back. So now that our app has loaded, let's go ahead and start off by trying to create an account. So I just click on that button. I'm going to enter just a random email. We can just do hello at world.com and our password can be, it just has to be six characters according to the rules of Firebase. So let's just do one, two, three, four, five, six, and we can click sign up. And as you can see, it navigated over to our additional page, which is a great sign. So let's go over and see if it worked in Firebase. Now that we're in Firebase, we're going to click the little reload button here on the screen. And as we can see, it did indeed work. We have hello at world.com having been created on today's date, which is pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and go back in our application, leave the create an account and go back to our login page and see if we can log in with the same email. First, if we click on let's go, you're gonna see that nothing happens. And that's because we had the guard statements that said, hey, if both fields are empty, don't do anything. And so that's just a cool way that our safety net actually worked. So let's go ahead and try this. Hello at world.com. And the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. We click on let's go. And as you can see, it did work and we were able to log in as well, which is pretty cool. And so just like that, we've completed creating a user login and create an account page in Xcode with Firebase. Thank you so much for watching and happy coding! Welcome back, my name is Kemi and today we're going to be...